Victoria Agbai runs this skincare product business in the Ghanaian capital, Accra. This business provides the only disposable income she has for personal and family upkeep. In 2019, when Agbai started, it was all joy. At the time, she thought this was the answer to having a regular flow of income. But nowadays, she struggles to make ends meet. It has been tough coping with soaring inflation, which not only gnaws away at her income, but also her production levels. Almost all the raw materials have doubled or tripled or quadrupled, and there have been a lot of supply chain um, disruptions. So getting access to some of the, the few um, components that are imported, like the fragrance oils or the packaging materials, it's really difficult. Um, so as an entrepreneur, you have to surround yourself with positive people. There are days when, honestly, I feel like giving up. Dr. Joseph Obin runs a larger business than Agbais, situated away from Accra's central business district. His electrical product business employs hundreds of people. Obin, who also leads the Union of Traders in Ghana, says excessive taxes from the government have also made it tough sustaining businesses like his. Our capitals have been depleted. The last couple of years have seen increment of taxes and that we are being overburdened. And then the last quarter of 2022 also saw the depreciation of the Ghana cities. Um, that also depleted about 52% of our working capitals. This is the state of affairs. Inflation is over 50%. Some businesses have closed because of high inflation. Prices of essential commodities are eating away at the incomes of ordinary people. Government was expecting to have secured a $3 billion bailout from the IMF by now. But restructuring unsustainable debts hasn't gone well so far. Securing assurances from creditors like China would be key. But analysts say the government must also cut down on public spending, which is estimated to be over $11.6 billion. That's 27.4% of the country's GDP, a trend that worries some experts. The first thing that you should do is to cut your own expenditure before you even started looking at debt restructuring. Because when you go to World Bank, <laughs> IMF and you're looking, they will look at it. All these things are factors delaying it all, but they don't want to ac accept it. They think that you want to keep your old, sty old style of business, but you don't want to sacrifice. The government doesn't seem sure of when things will get under control. Its best bet is the IMF deal. Etua Hene believes that is a bad strategy when there are alternatives. If remittances alone is bringing you well over four billion and you're just going to take a loan for four billion, what is it? If you structure your remittances very well, you can even do, uh, you can do foreign bond remitt uh, bonds with those who pay you and you get good money because they are remittances. The government has promised to tackle the crisis, but there isn't any sign of when ordinary people would get the financial help they so desperately need. Isaac Kaleji, Africa Matters, Accra, Ghana.